Well, welcome back to In the Word. I got a great study this morning in Ezekiel 36. Uh, God's Word is always good, and it'll be good for us this morning. So grab your Bibles, and let's turn to Ezekiel 36. Before I get into the uh, chapter today, just wanted to commend you for hanging in there with Ezekiel. You know, the uh, major prophets are called major prophets because they're majorly long. And uh, sometimes it gets redundant. Uh, sometimes you uh, tire. We're used to shorter New Testament books. And, uh, but God challenges us in his word to not only look at those uh, shorter New Testament books, but also the longer major prophets. So hang in there with Ezekiel. And I'm looking forward to uh, today's study which is really looking at a question that we all care about, I think. Uh, will God forgive? I think that's what's answered in this question. Will he forgive? So we look at Ezekiel 36, want to uh, divide it up into basically two major sections. Um, one is verses 1 through 7, where God talks about the nations, and verses 8 through 38, we talks about his people, Israel. And again, we're answering the question here this morning, or this morning while I'm uh, recording this, will God forgive? So we see here uh, in verses 1 through 7, this discussion of um, the nations. Um, notice in verse 1, he says, Prophesy to the mountains of Israel and say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Of course, this is figure of speech here. We don't ignore the figures of speech, even though we take the Bible literally. Uh, uh, Ezekiel is commanded to speak uh, his God's word over all of Israel. Remember, he is in Babylon, so you can imagine Ezekiel turning and uh, speaking these words in the direction of Israel. And God is addressing Israel's enemies in verse 2. And in verse 3, he says, for good reason, for good reason, God's judgment of Israel or God's judgment of these nations uh, is not uh, capricious. Uh, God never judges in a way that's um, prompted by anger, but it's prompted by reason. It's prompted by reason. So verse 5, as you go through this first section here, talks about the uh, nations have been joyful in their conquering of God's people. And this arouses God's jealousy and brings judgment on those nations. Um, think for yourself uh, when someone has uh, been joyful over some misfortune that has befallen you. Or perhaps if you're a parent, uh, you have seen, say at a school or a playground, uh, your child uh, pushed down on the playground, uh, your child perhaps uh, pushed violently, and somebody, uh, the other child walks away laughing, how that um, causes anger in you, and you want to uh, go correct that child, but you know it's inappropriate for you, not inappropriate for God when he sees his own people abused and pushed down and taken advantage of. So God... Um, is jealous and he brings judgment on those nations and God's judgment in verses 6 and 7 is as we've talked before talionic uh, fancy word that means it's appropriate uh, as the nations uh, have um, insulted Israel so those nations will in themselves it says in verse 7 endure the in their own insults so god is judgment is going to be appropriate we get in verse 8 then we enter this uh, new section of uh, chapter 36 a section that begins with uh, um, israel uh, focuses on israel and uh, we're going to divide this into three smaller pieces i said 8 to 38 was about israel this first section is about Israel's growth, verses 8 through 15. This is, um, it starts out uh, talking about um, your branches will bear fruit for my people Israel. They will soon come for behold, I am for you. I will turn to you 
you will be cultivated and sown. So let's think about this for a moment. Uh, Israel has had a long, long history of disobedience and rebellion against God. Going all the way back to Solomon and David even. Long, long history that God has warned them. He sent prophets to them over and over again. Uh, yet they were disobedient, uh, culminating in the prophecies of uh, Ezekiel concerning the destruction of the temple, which came true. But now here God is saying, I will turn to you. You will be cultivated and sown. Can God forgive? Well, we see it certainly in Israel that God is willing to forgive his people. The forgiveness he talks about here, cultivating them, uh, sowing them, is really talking literally about the uh, reward that's promised to them in Deuteronomy 27. If you go back there, uh, you'll see a long chapter full of blessings and cursings. The blessings are for obedience, and God is promising them that even though they have long history of disobedience, he will nevertheless forgive them and reestablish them and pour out blessings on them. Look at verses 10 and 11 in this section. Not only will he sow and reap fruit from the land, but he will also multiply men on the house of Israel. I think he's talking about the return of God's people in accordance with the land covenant of Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 10, where God promises that he's going to bring his people back from a worldwide dispersion. When we look at verses 12 through 15, make note of those phrases, never again, anymore, any longer, any longer is mentioned twice. It says this is a promise for uh, not just a temporary return, but a permanent return to the land that God had pledged to them in Genesis 12, verse 7. That this is looking forward to a end times permanent completion of God's plan for Israel. is keeping his promises to them. Turn down to verse 16 then. We move from uh, uh, that last section about growth to this section about judgment in verses 16 through 21. Um, this is apparently another word, says Son of Man, when the house of Israel was living in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. Their way before me was like the uncleanness of a woman. Seems like God is, uh, uh, this is another word from the Lord, a subsequent word that's coming to Ezekiel. God's explaining it here. And in verse 17, he talks about Israel's unfaithfulness. They defiled the land. In verse 18, it says they shed blood, embraced idolatry. Verse 20, uh, they judged and profaned the name of God. In verse 21, God was moved to action, moved to action to protect his reputation. So Israel's salvation and its blessing are rooted uh, in God's worth, God's reputation, not their own. This is why they can be secure and sure that God is going to fulfill his promises because he is pledged by his name. He is given an oath by his own name because there's nothing higher for him to swear by, that God is going to fulfill the promises he made to Israel for his own reputation. And we see that uh, throughout the Bible, uh, Hebrews 6.18 says that uh, two unchangeable things, which is an impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement. What are those two things? Well, by his name, by his name and by his character. In other words, God has sworn by his own name. And we see that in Genesis 26.3. He says, I will establish the oath which I sw swore to your father Abraham. So he's passing on and swearing by the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he made to Abraham as he hands those promises off to Isaiah and then Jacob, or not Isaiah, but uh, Isaac and then Jacob. So God is um, um, going to keep those promises because he has sworn by his own name. 
When we come down to uh, verses 24 to and 32, uh, we ask this question, how will God vindicate and prove himself holy? Well, verse 24, he makes it pretty clear he's going to fulfill the land covenant that I spoke of earlier. He's going to fulfill the covenant of Jeremiah, uh, as you see here when he changes their heart. Verse 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. This is the new covenant that he swore in Jeremiah 31 to 31, 31, 31. Verses 28 to 30, look at that. You will live in the land that I gave to your father, forefathers, so you will be my people and I will be your God. And uh, verse 31, verse 30, I'm sorry, I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the produce of the field so that you will never again uh, receive the disgrace of famine among the nations. They, in other words, be secure in the land. And this was part of the Davidic covenant. And finally, God is going to, as we said earlier, pour out the blessings of Deuteronomy 27. So again, what we see here is God being faithful to his people, being faithful to the promises uh, that he has made to them uh, because he is God. So, can we be sure that God will forgive us, his people? Well, take note from what he has done in the book of Ezekiel for Israel, that he has forgiven them, not because they're so good, but because he is so good. Same for us, that God is going to forgive us. Our assurance is secured in God's character. It's a part of uh, uh, God's covenant with Israel and his grace extended to us, uh, Israel's future in these ver verses were secured by God's promises. So we in the church are secured by the unchanging grace of God. Write down uh, for further study here, Romans 15, 8 to 9. It's what Paul says uh, to the church in Rome, making the point that they are one unified body, Jew and Gentile together. He says, For I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision, that is to the Jews, on behalf of the truth of God, to confirm the promises given to the fathers. So God, Jesus is the guarantee. He's, we can say, the guarantor of the promises of God, that he is going to fulfill them to the circumcision. He's confirming those promises. Verse 9, though, says, For the Gentiles, he is also this confirmation for the Gentiles to glorify God for his mercy. So for the people of the circumcision, Jesus confirms the promises. For the Gentiles, he confirms God's mercy. That's you and I, brothers and sisters. We can be sure of God's mercy for us because of the sacrifice that Christ has made. Finally, just in a, another in, by way of application, God's prophetic word uh, reveals to us uh, what is yet future, what is coming. We can see his faithfulness to his promises, see his faithfulness to his grace, so you and I today can live in light of his promises and his grace. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Persevere through Ezekiel, and um, God will bless you over and over for it.